All right, hi you guys. I am Tide Siren with The Geek Life here with Steve Cardenas. And we are at Emerald City Comic Con. We are going to do this really quick because we are at his table and I don't want to keep him from making yes money here. <laughs> so my first question to you is going to be, how did you get into acting? Oh, we're going to pause because of guests. <laughs> there we go. So Steve, how would you say you got into acting? Well, I didn't have aspirations to be an actor. I just heard about an audition on the radio. They were doing what's called a, a, a cattle call. And uh, I just went there. was like 4,000 people at the audition. And I just said, I just showed them what I knew how to do and never dreaming that they'd ever call me back. And like two days later, they called me back and I said, hey, we liked your audition. We want to fly you to California to meet the uh, producers. So I was pretty excited about it. Just right after that, they yeah. were like, yeah, you're the one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I still had to audition against some other people that they had picked from other cities, mm -hmm. but I ended up beating all of them out too. So. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And how old were you when you did that? I was 20. You were 20. That's pretty good. I feel like I need to catch up on some success <laughs> stories now. <laughs> so what, what inspired you to want to give that a shot and to continue this as a, an actor? when you were growing up? Well, um, I mean, I guess like the influences that I had was like, as a kid growing up, was like the Karate Kid, um, you know, and all those Kung Fu movies they used to show on Saturday mornings. Um, that was what inspired me to become a martial artist. And then, like I say, the, the whole audition thing was a food thing. But, um, but ever since I started doing conventions, you know, I kind of just relate to all the people because when I was younger, I used to watch like, G.I. Joe and He-Man and Spider-Man and all that stuff like that. So it's kind of cool to be able to relive that sort of part of my childhood. And then people get to come and meet me and they're really kind of reliving their childhood, you know? Oh, so wow. yeah. uh, it's kind of interesting how it comes around like that in a circle. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. Now, having as much success as you have had, have you had any like kind of roadblocks to, in your acting or roadblocks in, I don't know, how to speak with or, you know, people who are excited with fans? Um, no, um, not, not really too much. Um, you know, as far as, like, roadblocks with acting, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, it, there's always, you know, a lot of competition for acting jobs because, you know, you, I live in L.A. and that's just how it is. But when it comes to the conventions and meeting with the fans and stuff, you know, um, I don't really feel like... Um, you know, uh, I feel like I just embrace them because, uh, you know, I, I know that this is their first time getting, maybe their first time getting a chance to meet me, and, um, you know, I want to make that experience as good for them as possible. Right. So, um, yeah, I just try to give as much as I can to them, you know. Okay. That's, a, that's I mean, one way to keep your fans happy because yeah. with people who come up so much and there's so many Power Rangers, you know, you gotta keep your name out there. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so I do a lot like, of social media. That's one way to keep it out there as well, too. Right. You know, keep the fans interested on social media, and then I post up and let them know what cities I'm gonna be in and things like that. So. And that's a cool way to keep in touch with everybody, too. And it kind yeah. of is like keeping in touch personally with you almost. Yeah, because yeah, they can so... leave comments on my page, I'll comment back and all that. Right, yeah, so. okay. So go leave comments. <laughs> 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 all right, my next question. You're in a battle to save the Earth. Who are your three psychics? Oh, well, I always, I would do that every episode anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was always the same. Actually, there was five of us, you know? Uh, but I, I know what you're saying. You're mm -hmm. saying, like, who would I want to have with me in that? Uh, well, actually, one, one guy is actually one of my good friends right here who's also another Power Ranger. This Jason Font right there. <laughs> Jason up, Font, up? the Red Time Force Ranger. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, we do a lot of these shows talking together. talking about his heroes? Huh? You talk about your heroes and inspirations? Yes, <laughs> heroes and inspirations, and that's why your I fingers turned right it toward on. you. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, no, Jason Font actually would be somebody that I have in battle with me. Uh, Tommy, the Green Ranger as well, too. And uh, I think those probably, these two plus me, I think would be a good, a good team. And with all of your travels, and you said you've been to this for, you've been going to 40 cons a year? Yeah, I do generally about 40 conventions a year, yeah, cities all over the world. So you must have experienced so much talent out there. What would you say is probably one that stuck with you the most or been something that you've been most inspired by? Most inspired by? Um, well, I just, I don't know. I mean, like, when it comes to inspiration, if there's anything I'm inspired about with the comic conventions in general, um, 
is that I just love the fact that, you know, uh, a society that kind of generally tends to frown on geeks and, and outcasts and misfits and things like that, um, now there's a place for them to be able to come and just be themselves and to realize that there's like-minded people out there just like them and uh, it makes them feel like they have a place where they're welcome. And for me, I think that's amazing because, um, you know, I think it's so important to be able to express yourself. And so that's kind of why I um, like these conventions hey, man, as many of as I can. Right. Very cool. As someone who is out with the public and all of your fans so often in the Comic-Con community, what would you say would be your best yeah, advice to a fan, a creator, uh, an aspiring cosplayer? What would be your best advice? Um, in what way? Like, what best advice about what? Just anything. Like, like what would you say about... Like, how to break into being in the convention scene? Or yeah, how to break, how to break in, into acting? Or or how to, I don't yeah, any, of, any of the above. Well, um, you know... When it comes to breaking into acting, you know, it's just you have to be prepared to take a lot of rejection. Be prepared to go on a lot of auditions. There's a lot of fact other factors involved too. You got to get an agent, all that kind of stuff like that. You've got to be in a city that is conducive to, you know, getting work like that. So living in one of those big major cities. So if you're really serious about being an actor, then you need to have to you need to do that kind of stuff. You need to move to a certain city where you can have a chance to go audition and get your More exposure. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to like, you know, cosplayers and things like that, um, you know, there's, there's a, a real, if you're looking to break into, you know, being like cosplay guests, um, you know, like a guest at like conventions and stuff, um, you know, there's a lot of websites out there where you can like get a list of conventions and the convention lists have uh, the names and, and emails of the promoters for those shows and you can reach out to them specifically and say, hey, I'm, this, I'm a cosplay artist and you know, this is how many followers I have or whatever and you know, would you be interested in having me at your show kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so what would you do? You have a full day. No obligations to friends, family, no plans. What do you day for a full day for yourself? Uh, I start out in the morning, wake up around 5.30 in the morning so that I can go to a 6 a.m. Uh, jiu-jitsu class that I teach with a bunch of my people. and uh, So I just kind of get that training out of the way early in the morning. Even though you have no obligation. Even though I have no obligation. You yeah. like to do that for yeah, fun. Yeah, I like to do that for fun, get out of the way. Right. And honestly, the rest of the time, because I travel so much, I'm, like, I'm usually gone four or five days a week, you know, bouncing around. City, city. So I only have a couple days at home. So most of the time, I like to just sit and watch Netflix. I'm a serious homebody. I don't really you like Netflix? Yeah, yeah. What are your favorite, like, top two favorite Netflix shows? Uh, well, um, I, I don't know. I, right now, I'm actually re-watching West Wing, which I love. Oh, okay. You know, I'm not even really political or anything like that, but I just like that show. And then uh, I like the Altered Carbon as well, and the new uh, movie that came out, The uh, Cloverfield Paradox. That's pretty oh, good yeah. As well too. yeah. I like so. that one. Yeah. Alright, since we got a line of fans here for you, I'm going to wrap this up. What kind of toothpaste do you use? I use uh, Spongebob Children's I use Colgate. <laughs> Tartar Control with whitening. <laughs> and I use black licorice flavored uh, children's toothpaste. Alright you guys, from Tide Siren here at uh, Emerald City Comic Con, happy cosplaying and have a good one. <laughs>